Okay, I've uh, made this DVD for you to make things a lot easier. Obviously, sadly, I can't be with you to explain this very important step-by-step -step instructional DVD to make things a lot easier for you. Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm pretty tired at the minute. Um, but I want to get this done. It's important and the most important thing is to take your time, don't take any shortcuts because trust me there aren't any and do it literally step by step and it's important too that yourself Carol and Pat work together not individual you work together and it'll you'll just have to dedicate the time a little bit of time it won't take you long uh, to complete this to make it successful at no time are you to use a solicitor in anything whatsoever except for one thing and one thing only pretty much and that is when it comes to the time and you have all the necessary documents in order which I'll explain to you um, to transfer the deeds of this house which is freehold and owned outright as the solicitor knows it's paid for there are no bills against it no liens against it and more importantly I don't owe anybody a red cent not one penny that I'm aware of so I'm going to take you through it now, uh, step by step, and I highly suggest that you get a book, if I haven't already left one, and you make notes, uh, if I haven't already written some as well, uh, step by step, and use this DVD, of which there'll be a number of copies, to digest it. I suggest you watch it a few times and digest it and make reference to it constantly because this is well thought out. I've done this twice before for my stepdad and mum and um, it just isn't difficult. It's as hard as you make it. So you're named as executor. There's you Pat as an executor and you Carol. And when it comes to probate, one very important thing, applying for a thing called probate Carol, you are to apply for grant of probate, which in effect makes you the lawyer. Everything you do from this point, from the wishes of my will to probate, is completely legally binding. You've got to understand that. Everything you do, it's, um, it's important that you don't cross the line. You have to do it as per the, the way they say it. And, you know, that's not me dictating, that's just them, the way it's written. So, like I said, I've done it twice. It is not difficult. And uh, <coughs> I'm going to take you through step by step to make it far, far easier. Now, the first thing is, all the files, my files, are in a black flight case downstairs with um, a combination lock. The combination of that is 007 on both sides. Brian has a separate file box the same. It's another black flight case. It's identical. All his files are in there. Any other files are in the filing cabinet in my small bedroom at the front downstairs or in the safe. So those are the only places you need to look. All the files are marked, so again, you just need to take your time and look for it. And in some cases, there's some, there's some notes written on the actual file folder covers. But you'll find phone numbers, you'll find everything you need within those files, and it covers just about everything. So, the first thing you need to do now is you need to make a note, start making notes, and first thing to do is obtain uh, a certified certificate of death. That's the first thing you get. Now, that's normally issued via a doctor and 
it has to be registered, the death has to be registered with the uh, Department of uh, Births, Marriages and Deaths, which I believe is in King Street, Blackpool, but there may be another one for this area, I'm not certain of that. But anyway, you must get certificates of death, and I suggest, because I've done this before, I suggest you get three or four copies, but you can't make your own copies. They must be certified copies and marked accordingly as certified copies because they, nobody will accept them unless they are. You have to pay for those, they're very cheap. So you get certified copies. You actually register the death with them. The next thing, I'll cover my funeral. This is what I want. I want you to keep it simple, no lavishness, no expensive uh, unnecessary stuff, I don't want that. But I'm suggesting you use the co-op or cooperative funeral service. They are at Bispam, uh, very close to the bridge, just on the other side of the bridge by the B&Q there. If you contact them and uh, work out the funeral arrangements, and my wish is that I am crem cremated at uh, Leighton Cemetery and um, laid to rest at that office of theirs, which is at the same location in Bispam near B&Q. And I'd like to be dressed in my black tuxedo, black dress shirt, which is white with red bow tie and the red cummerbund, which are in a drawer in my bedroom at the front downstairs, a little one, and black socks, no shoes. I'd like to be cremated at Leighton Cemetery, my ashes put into a jar or a box, and um, I'd like you to just hold on to that until such time as at some early date, you arrange a service, my sister can tell you about this one, Christine, because the service will be held at St. Chad's Church, Poulton, in the grounds, and at that service I would like my ashes to be put into the ground, and if you ask Christine, she will tell you where my mum and stepdad's ashes were put, I'd like them put in the same place. Now, in my will, You'll also notice that I've <coughs> uh, left the sum of £500, which you can take from monies that are left here. Um, and, um, and or from what's retrieved from selling certain items. But the money's going to be there somehow. Uh, sum of £500, that is for one purpose. And... You'll have to approach the vicar at the church and tell him that this money, somebody will have to issue a cheque, this money has been left to them for the sole purpose, and I want you to pay attention to this particularly because the sole purpose of erecting a wooden bench within the church grounds there with a uh, metal plaque screwed to it with a message, something like, in loving memory of, and then my name and yours, Carol and Brian's name, and whoever, whatever else you think's appropriate. But that bench, now this is important, that bench is to be of a prefabricated type, not specially made to order. A prefabricated, that must be said to the vicar, a prefabricated bench of a suitable design and quality for usage in that churchyard that's weatherproofed and everything. So I think £500 more than cover that. I do know somebody that had one made in there that was made, handmade out of oak, and it was £700, and it's absolutely ridiculous. So I think that's more than fair to, um, to cover that. So that's the funeral side of it done. Now, what you need to do now is... Again, working together with a notepad and keep a log of everything you've done, then you won't trip up on yourselves. You must keep a log of each 
person you've contacted and so on. And just make a note of it in that in that book, the date that you contact them, the phone numbers and so on. <coughs> the next thing you need to do, once you've got the certificate of death, you need to apply for probate. Probate. That's the term. You're going to apply for probate. Now, in the flight case, downstairs, there is a file marked clearly probate. And whilst you're in that file box, you may see a file folder that has will or wills or something like that. The wills that are contained in there, which is an old one written by Cooper Nimmo solicitors, does not mean anything. I've rewritten my new will with family wills. So you must know the new will is being written in the month of, it'll be in the month of August this month. 2010 and it will be with family wills again all the phone numbers and details are there for that but I'll tell you more about that in a minute so you're going to apply for probate this is the trickiest of the issues but it's not that difficult so um, and what you need to do at the same time before you get the probate forms which I've probably maybe partly filled in for you already they need to be completed um, you need to call look for the file in the in the file box again look for the file marked will family wills um, they're a local company what you need to do is call them up they will come out to you with the will etc and get Ask her for four certified copies. Four certified copies is a must. So, I've just got a few notes here. It's difficult for me with this. But, um, right, as I said, you're going to apply for probate now. So what, what you need to do in order to do probate is you fill out the forms, you then get together the death certificate, the will, um, and any other documents that the probate office, which you, you need to call, the numbers are in there on that file, um, it's Normally the office is in Lancaster, but you may have to call Liverpool, there's one there that deals with the probate as well. So you'd have to ask them which office is dealing with it. And um, you then arrange to send by registered mail or recorded delivery the forms to them that you've filled in and completed. And at the same time, ask them what it is they require. And eventually they will set up a date for you to go for an interview and that will be yourself and Pat I believe uh, you as the person that's written for grant of po probate and the executor off the will I think uh, so anyway when you meet with them I've done it before you sit down they just go through the forms with you it's a pretty simple procedure there's nothing complicated um, but it's worth noting at this point, they they will you're going to be declaring on that form literally all my assets. So the main asset is the house, and then it is to do with money that's in any bank accounts of which there's only one. That's uh, with Lloyd's TSB. It's a current account. Um, there's a file on that, and my card and all that business if there's money still in it the um, let me see Probate. yeah you, you the, um, on that form you, you it's your obligation to assess the worth of all my assets so 
I would put, telling you to put down on that form because of depreciation and age that the contents of the house total value is going to be around about two and a half thousand pounds just say there was you know you don't have to tell them but there's no car there's no nothing so depreciated value on all contents of the house is that because what you're going to do you don't have to put this you don't have, even have to say it but if anybody asks a lot of the stuff in the house belongs to brian anyway you know it was his stuff he paid for it right uh, as far as jewelry and stuff there wasn't any um so you'll also have to declare uh the fact that probably there's a, an insurance policy a life insurance policy which is with access on life which there's a file there i'll get to that a bit later um because you'll have to apply to them once you've got probate and all the other certificates etc to get that money sent which is to be paid out by check into Brian's name and into his account Brian's name only in his account um, so probate you know by this time you've got uh, you've got the certificate of death you're waiting for the grant of probate which will be some sort of certificate that you can use to do other work um, you've got the will you've called family wills now while you're waiting for all that what you can do is the following so make a note of this you need to stop all benefits etc uh, in the files again they're all in there and I'll, list, I'll tell you now what those are. But make a note of this. My national insurance number is Y M for mother 615925B for brother. That's Y M 615925B for brother. You'll see it on the forms in the files anyway. You need to cancel. Uh, again, this is in a file. You need to cancel my direct payments. Pat will know what that is. There is a file folder with the flight boxes. It's like a grey uh, file with uh, like a lever inside. And there's all plastic sleeves in it. Everything that's in there needs to be given back to direct payments. So if if you look in there and look for a letter with a if you can find one with a woman's name of either um, Anne Cutler or somebody like that call direct payments and it's the one in Preston or wherever it is it's not the one in Blackpool don't ever call them it's it's the phone numbers that are contained in that file you must call them and tell them to come out and see you give them the whole file folder because there will be money in that account and it has to be paid back to them so you give them everything which contains checkbooks cards everything tell them to sort it out just let them sort it the next thing to do is um, get a hold of multability Again, there's a file on multability. Uh, you could perhaps easiest do this by contacting the Renault garage up at the airport. Um, it's just up there past Morrison's in the same area, behind Office World. You go there and explain what's happened and arrange for the car to be returned with the keys and etc. Now you need to cancel my benefits so you need to call the disability living allowance people tell them what's happened and get them to stop payment into my bank account of disability living allowance and tell them also to stop payment for the multability vehicle that I had also you need to cancel with the benefits people 
uh, you'll have to call um, perhaps maybe the job centre on this one to find out who deals with SDA, that's Severe Disablement Allowance. That also needs to be cancelled and stopped from going into my bank account. Now you need to call all the utility people. That's water, United Utilities, gas, which is British gas. Electric is supplied also by British gas. If you look in the files, the account numbers and phone numbers are in there for all those. And you need to transfer those accounts to Brian's name. That's important. You cancel my name and change it to Brian's name. You then need to get a hold of BT, British Telecom. Again, there's a file in there and explain what's happened and get it transferred to Brian's name. Now this is a bit of a tricky one, but in theory, Brian, if you say that Brian's living here on his own and Brian's still on benefits, Brian will have his council tax paid, but you need to get, you need to call the council tax and it's done by Wire Borough Council, so look for the letters in the Wire Borough Council tax folder um, which will be in that same black case and tell them what's happened and you need to transfer it to Brian um, it's very important this one Carol because if you were to be living here um, and they don't know about it you Brian would get in trouble or if they did know about it and you're working then you'd probably be liable to pay council tax, which is not cheap. You need to uh, find my passport and cancel that out at some point. No urgency on that one. Cancel my driving licence. Um, and what you need to do now is contact AXA Sun Life for life insurance policy that I took out, which matures on September the 11th, 2010 this year. So, if I'm gone any time after September the 11th, 2010, it's um, eligible for payout on my death, and it's in the sum of something like £2,140 or something similar. So find the file folder, call them up, ask them what documents they need, send them, and get the payment made to Brian's account for the whole amount. Um, I'll get back to Brian's business in a minute. So I'm just scanning through these papers here because of stuff I've got written here that... Yeah, so anyway, you deal with Axis on Life to get that money. It's important, that money. Um, right. <laughs> this, is, this may take just a little while, but it's important. It's very important. At the first available opportunity, you need to transfer the house deeds from my name to Brian's name and you will need a certain number of documents to do that so make a note again make notes all the time but make a serious note of this one the deeds for the house are held with a lady called Paula Robinson that's Paula Robinson and she works for Cooper Nimmo solicitors and they are on Church Street, not far from Buchanan Street, on the opposite side of the road there from Buchanan Street, actually on Church Street. So if you call them up, call Paula Robinson and explain that she'll know, she knows who I am, uh, explain what's happened and tell her that you want to transfer the deeds of the house. I've already checked with her, they're perfectly all in order and she will arrange, uh, be a small fee, to transfer the deeds of the house into Brian's sole name. 
as instructed in my will which is legally binding it can't be any other it has to go into his sole name so <coughs> asked paula robinson what documents she needs to see in order to do it which will probably be probate grant of poll probate carol which you've applied for um my certificate of death and um let me see what else uh, the will, obviously the will, a certified copy or the original will. So, um, like I say, just to reiterate, just take your time on this. It might sound complicated, but it's not. I'm probably making it sound worse than it is. Anything you need to know on any of these issues at all, it's all contained within, like I said, those black file um like flight cases with combination locks on the top and a handle there's two of them identical one's got my stuff in the other one's got brian's in and there is another a briefcase that that contains carol all brian's educational certificates that he's achieved and things about ucas uclam to do with his uni and everything else i don't think there's anything loose laying around it's all in there and they're they are so important they need to be treasured uh other stuff is in the safe and um the the there's some in a filing cabinet like i said in the front bedroom unless i decide to move it beforehand So another thing you need to do now, quite quickly, is cancel Sky TV, cancel Virgin. Uh, there are files there on both of these and change BT, the British Telecom. And if you cancel Sky, someone will come out and remove the HD box and... Um, Virgin does the internet. So you've got Sky TV, Virgin for the internet, and um, BT Landline. Uh, Sky also does the telephone bills are billed to them. So there's a bit of a crossover with that. What you need to do is cancel Sky, cancel Virgin, change BT Landline maybe to Brian's name or just open a complete new account if you wish for Sky and everything to suit your what you can afford I've covered Wireburr about the council tax um, it's important Carol that you and all his files are in his briefcase in his uh, black case with the handle on it and the combination lock Brian is on disability living allowance. His national insurance number is on letters in there. Uh, his national insurance card is filed in those files somewhere. It's like a small credit card with a number on it. It's very important. Um, Brian is on disability living allowance, that's DLA. And he's on low mobility middle rate care. That money is paid directly into his bank account each month. He's also on employment support allowance. And a cheque comes in the mail every two weeks for £328, whatever it is. That has to be paid into his bank account. And you need to keep on top of that because you need to look at in that file to see and check with the... Um, doctor's office at Peter's, uh, Elizabeth Street to check when Brian needs a new sick note sending in. Otherwise, if he doesn't send it, he won't get his benefits. You also need to keep on top of things with regard to Brian and the early intervention team for the doctor psychiatrist, Dr. Robson, uh, Linda Benson, who's the um, CPN, psychiatric nurse, etc, etc. 
Now there's a bit of miscellaneous notes here for you, Carol. Um, Brian has one Halifax current account for his banking with a card. He also has two ISAs, independent savings accounts, individual savings accounts, both with Halifax. They are in a file, again, they have books, each one for each account, but there's only £25 in each one. They were set up a long time ago with a view to using them, so don't cancel them. Just, um, if ever you want to encourage him to put money in there, because it's tax-free, that's the only benefit. Um, now, keep a specific log of all this. Don't just put it to memory, either of you, because if you do, you'll forget what you've done. You really will. I did, when I did it. Make a log of what you've done, and then make a log of the response to what you get back from it. Now, what I want you to do, Carol, oh, there's one note first. When it comes to the probate, the forms you're filling in, I am not eligible for inheritance tax because your estate has to be worth over £320,000 and mine isn't. I don't know what this house is worth at the moment, but I'll probably at least about 150000 I would imagine. Anyway, um, so what you need to do, Carol, um, for assisting you until completion with regard to... Um, doing the these necessary jobs to, to round it off um, I want you to pay Pat initially up front to retain of to do it a hundred pounds and when you've completed doing it to the best of your ability I want you to pay Pat another hundred pounds so that's 200 in total 100 up front 100 when you're done shouldn't take you long to do it um, and uh, like I said, please work together on it because it just makes all the difference. Um, if if there's any service done, which there will be at Leighton Crematorium um, when the cremation's done. I would like the following music played if you can get, you normally have to provide it on your own CD or something, so if you could get um, Brian to maybe cut this onto a disc or something, but in any order, whichever one you do, um, I'd like the following songs played, bits of if possible. That's Chopin's Nocturne, which Brian will know what it is. Uh, I would like Slippery People played by the Talking Heads, Sweet Child of Mine at the End by Guns N' Roses, and Oh Carol. So that's Sweet Child of Mine to finish with, Slippery People by the Talking Heads, Chopin's Nocturne and Oh Carol. Now, what you really... Oh, I've got some phone numbers here. <coughs> um, DLA, Disability Living Allowance. You need to contact 0845 7123 SDA, you could ask them, which is Severe Disablement Allowance, for the phone number for them. Um, that's just a, a snippet of information. Right. When... When you... Uh, if there's money in my TSB account and you find the card for it, um, 
compare the number on the card, the account number, to the numbers on the bank statements within my current account file, my current account file for Lloyd's TSB, not any other account, my current account. Uh, the PIN code for that card is 1365. That's 1365. Now, I've already given you my... Um, oh, and there is one other thing you need to cancel, sorry, with regard to benefits. You need to cancel pension credit. So there's a file in that, the files again on pension credit. Call them up and have it cancelled, okay? That's really important. If there's any overpayments, they'll ask you for it back. But I doubt there will be. Now, once you've done all this, Carol, once you've got everything sorted out, there's a couple of things. One is, I highly suggest that you consider... Uh, getting this house valued by three reputable um, estate agents and the one I would prefer you to use because of I think the best is a company called Reeds and Reigns um, there's another one called Farrell and Howarth they have an office in Cleveland's um, and any other one you care to use but the one primarily to use is definitely going to be Farrell and Howarth. Uh, sorry, Reeds and Reigns. And just stop for one minute. <coughs> yes, so the best thing to do is get the house valued with a view to selling it and uh, then it's my wishes that Brian buys himself another suitable property perhaps for less than the money you get for this and to um, use that money for a much more suitable manageable Perhaps a nice, modern, two-bedroom apartment or similar, whatever. But nothing old, nothing ridiculously big and hard to manage and needs a lot of repairs. Please seek professional advice from some people. Ask somebody to go with you, be it Nancy or someone. Someone that really knows property and how to look at it because there's a lot of pitfalls. So... Please ensure, and the other thing is, it's legally bound also that my wish is that when Brian gets his next property, if that's what he's decided to do, it's his decision, is to have it in his sole, sole name. And I've warned him never to put it into joint names with anyone, never to take any loans against the property. He needs advising on that, that type of thing. He's very lucky to be owning his own home because that's your biggest outlay. And to buy one these days is pretty near impossible unless you've got loads of money. So, uh, if there is another property, please seek the best advice you can get in, in choosing it. It needs to be thoroughly inspected and thoroughly surveyed and read before you even think about purchasing it because you'll end up with a dump just don't end up in a position like that um, please keep on top of Brian's benefits and keep on top of uh, the fact that he needs um, constant monitoring with regard to his sick notes that need to be submitted and his appointments with the doctors and the early intervention team and most of all, be really tolerant with him because, um, you know, he's not easy, but I've had him with me most of the time and it hasn't been easy at times, believe me. But, you know, he's your child, Carol. You need to look after him. You really, really do. Even when the going's tough. But uh, he's in a far better position now. And that brings me now to... Uh, contents of the house. Right. 
in my opinion, everything's worth something. And what I consider to be a fair, val fair value. So it's my wish that all the contents of this house, less the ones, the stuff that Brian wants to really keep, which is probably a fair bit of it, all the surplus stuff, I'd like you, Carol, to work with Brian. I would like you to sell off all the surplus stuff and you are only to get a reasonable fair price for it. If you don't know the price, go on the internet and hunt it down because there's a lot there's a lot of really valuable stuff in this house by way of musical instruments. It's all really expensive stuff. There are too many things to list. Um, and even when it comes down to disposing of my clothes, which are pretty much all in this top room I'm in now, in the top front bedroom, they are all really pretty much very good brand made in excellent condition. They all have a value. And the reason I don't want you to give it away and nothing, absolutely nothing, is to go to charity shops or being given away. Find a way of selling it, even if you do boot sales or whatever, because the money that's got from all this stuff has to go into Brian's account. It really does. It has to go into Brian's bank account. There's no nicking stuff, Carol. There's no thieving stuff. There's nobody to come in this house whatsoever with the exception of Pat and yourself. Um, nobody's to be left in the house at any time. There's too much valuable stuff in the way of electronic equipment, um, you name it. But you can take your time in disposing of it, but the money has to go to Brian's account and he can use it because, you know, he will need that money. That's why I'm saying you just go, don't go throwing stuff out willy-nilly. He will need the funds at some point. It's going to come in really useful for him. But the place is absolutely loaded with every bit of equipment you can imagine, as you can see. So, I wouldn't concentrate on that at all at this stage. I'd just concentrate on getting this probate funeral over with this that and the other so i hope it works out well for you just take your time like i say don't rush it and it'll work out okay but most of all take care of sonny jim he's a good boy he's he deserves all the help he can get but um you know it's this is going to be quite a change a massive change for brian obviously and i just hope he you know He's going to be okay. Um, so, do what's important first. Work with Pat, and you, Pat, work with Carol uh, in harmony to get this thing sorted out. Uh, Carol, you'll have to make the time available to be available to do it. It's something you just can't put off. You have to get on with it at quite a rapid pace. There'll be delays. Like, for instance, when you apply for probate, there'll be delays in you um, getting that grant of probate, but it shouldn't be too long. It wasn't the last time I did it. It's, it's all up to you to get it done. Uh, as a point of interest, when I divorced Linda, it was settled complete. She has no uh, right to anything as, as per the divorce agreement, everything else. Um, the uh, divorce certificate I will leave in a file somewhere uh, but if there's any questions on any of that then you need to go to Cooper Nimmo solicitors and the man that dealt with it was called John Nimmo and he can answer all questions on that but just to let you know again I have revoked the will that I wrote with um, Cooper Nimmo and I'm now currently rewriting a new will which will be done with family wills it's a private company there's a file on it and that will will be available you've just got to call them when I've gone and tell them that the 
um, the circumstances and they will come out to see you straight away. So make sure you do it in that sort of order. I'm hoping you've made notes. Take a look at your notes, put them in order. And um, I think I've covered just about everything. I can't really think of um, much more. But if there is, I'll be putting it on the back end of this film a bit later on. But like I say, I have a lot of concerns. But it's Brian's welfare I care about the most. But if this lot's done properly, it'll put you in a position to arrange for Brian to have a property of his choice uh, but he will need professional help as I said to choose one and where he wants it it's up to him who he lives with but there's one very important thing Carol and you Pat for that matter one very important thing it's my wish Carol that Christine is not involved in any way whatsoever she is not to step foot in this house and also, there is to be no negotiation at any time, for as long as Brian lives, where Christine is trying to arrange for, say, Charlene to come and live with Brian in the property he owns, or Katrina, but particularly Charlene. That must never, ever happen. It would be an absolute catastrophe. So please, my wish, Carol, don't ever let that happen. And be very wary of Christine. Be very wary of her. She's a bit of a vagabond and a thief, so I hate to say that about my sister, but she's done it before and she's trying to do it again. So remember that. Okay, so I hope that really, really helps you out. I'm going for a brew now. I hope you guys have a nice day and we'll meet again. So now it's time to do a quick recap, so bear with me on this. Uh, the reason I've done this recap is to just basically go over so you can make some notes. So, uh, <coughs> a couple of notes to start with. Do not be tempted to do anything online with regard to filling forms, etc. at any time. The best way is to do it by uh, making phone calls to the necessary office involved, getting information from them as required, make notes on specifically exactly what they want. So, just to recap, number one, obtain a certificate of death and get four certified copies. You'll need them because you have to distribute them to different people and it's very handy for the sake of the cost. So, that, once again, number one, death certificate and four copies. Number two, set up the funeral. And uh, as an afternote, just remember this, because I'm on benefits, certain benefits, um, I should be entitled to, or you, you can do it, um, make a claim for funeral expenses. Now, I'm not sure what benefit office deals with that, but you should be able to find out quite easily um, through DWP, PAT, or somebody like that. Just um, get all the information, and you should be able to get maybe £600 or more. I don't know what it is. <coughs> we certainly got it when my mum... Uh, and uh, my stepdad died because they were on benefits so remember that number three um, Carol pay Pat a hundred pounds now and a hundred pounds later when all the work is complete after you get probate and everything else all that sort of thing and take that from funds that are, are left etc Number four, return the car to Motability. And again, it's done with Renault. Their office is then. The, the numbers, if you need some phone numbers, you probably find them abbreviated or on my phone, the Samsung, little Samsung phone. 
you could use that for reference. There's a number of very useful numbers on there, like early intervention team numbers for Brian, um, DWP, DLA, etc., etc. But Renault's number is on their their office and showroom is at the airport, over the back of Morrison's there, and it's what you call motability. So you need to. Uh, arrange for return of the car they'll pick it up if necessary i'm sure number five stop all my benefits which are disability leaving living allowance commonly known as dla you need to stop sda which is severe disabled allowment allowance and you need to stop pension credit and all the files are in that black case and you also need to f um, get a hold of the direct payments people. Now, there's a file, I think Pat's seen it, it's an open, like, book type file. It's there, you can't miss it. Inside, there's a whole lot of papers, checkbooks and all sorts. You mustn't use any of that. What you need to do is call, look for a phone number for their office in there, probably at Preston. But in particular, a woman called Anne Cutler. Her phone number's on my phone, the little Samsung. Call her, tell her what's happened, and when she tell her to come and pick up the whole file. Just keep it in one piece and give it to her. Um, there shouldn't be any problems with that at all. Just don't make them make it hard work for you. Just give them the file and say you sort it out. Right. Number five A. Call. Wire Borough Council, that's in Polton, their office, and um, you'll need to change the name on the council tax. Number six, change all domestic bills. That's gas and electric, which is done through British Gas for both. Again, files are in the file box. Water with United Utilities, change the account number and name to Brian. Seven, I highly suggest you cancel Sky, you cancel Virgin's account, and you cancel um, both of those. Uh, Sky covers the movies and all that HD. Virgin covers the, uh, at the moment, I'm using their broadband, although I'm paying for Sky for the same thing, but it's done through Virgin, so... <coughs> uh, stop both of those although it comes out automatically out of my bank account uh, they won't be able to get it anyway once you close the account down the next thing change BT British Telecom again the files are in that black case look for it the account number and everything what you'll need to do is change that BT to Brian's name Unless, this is important, unless you decide that you're going to take on a broadband phone and TV package or something of that nature with an independent company. And there are some of them where you don't have to pay for a BT landline. So investigate that. I'm sure Pat knows a bit about that. But um, just close it all down and then start again. Um... That was really number seven and eight. Now, number nine, uh, well, again, decide on which package you want, if you want something, or just have regular TV with free view for nothing until you get sorted out. Number ten, apply for probate with the forms that are in the file box, in a file that's clearly marked probate, Contact them for advice, make notes, meticulous notes, so that you don't run into any problem. Complete the forms, which I may have done so much anyway, then send them away and please make photocopies of them. And, more importantly, make sure you send it recorded delivery. And keep in touch with them and eventually they will make an appointment for you to visit an office of theirs it could be Lancaster it could be Liverpool there is a website that deals with all this
but by phoning one of their offices you'll find out that's the trickiest thing you've got to do but you'll have a meeting it'll be brief just go over it and if, eventually you will get a certificate of sorts which is the grant of probate and you're the person Carol that's applying so officially you are a lawyer you are legally bound by all the rules um, that surround it so don't do anything other than what they tell you because you can end up in really serious trouble believe me number 11 quite quickly close my bank account it's a current account with Lloyd's TSB I have a card for that account and the um, debit little uh, bank card um, make sure the number on the card corresponds to the checkbooks and the bank statements for that Lloyd's TSB account which is clearly my um, which is clearly my current account the card number the pin number if you need to use it to extract money out or whatever you need to do to run it down uh, but I suggest you don't use it after my death because uh, they might want to know why anyway the thing is it, the number is 1365 that's 1365 extract any extract any funds um, if you need to take the card the checkbooks to the bank or just simply burn them don't throw them away burn them number 12 important in the file box downstairs you will find a file marked AXA Sun Life Insurance there's a document in there that tells you uh, when this life insurance insurance can be paid which is from the 11th of September 2010 um, any time after that it's valid and it's to the sum of something like in excess of £2,000 I took that out in, with a view to using it possibly for whatever but mainly a top up for funeral expenses and such like so um, you need to call them up and ask them what documents you need to produce in order to release the funds which are to be released as I said before to Brian's name and Brian's bank account um, <coughs> being as he is the sole beneficiary 19 there is a file which I intend to put together with the file cases it's purple inside it is a whole bunch of house keys spare keys for the house uh, things to note these are odd things here it's all coming to my head that things I need to tell you about uh, be aware that in the garage there is electrical power and power points should you need it 21 Sent. I've got to 21 anyway central heating problems um, if if you have any problems with the central heating I suggest you familiarize with yourself how to turn it on and off and so on and so on um, there is a particular valve underneath the unit under the worktop which you need to become aware of to top up the water level but if you've got any problems with it I suggest you get somebody out to tell them but particularly the needle on the front of the central heating unit should be pointing to around number two if it drops to number one call somebody out and tell them ask them to tell you how to top it up with water because it's done automatically with a little valve underneath the cabinet but you have to get the right one familiarize yourself Carol for God's sake where the water cutoff tap is in an emergency um, I'm pretty sure you'll find it under the worktop under the central heating unit I think that's where it is it's a, it's a tap that will isolate all the water uh, fuse boxes for the electrical are at the front door as is the gas meter for when people come to read it if you've got any electrical faults then you need to uh, look at those um, fuses to see if the levers have come down and just flick them back up if they if they drop out again get somebody out um, I mentioned covering the funeral expenses 
Now it's important that you keep a record book. Um, what you need to do is log all the stuff in the, in the house, really. Um, you don't have to go down to the single like little items, but you need to log stuff in the house, particularly things that are going to de be disposed of. You must make a pretty meticulous record of this. And the reason being is because um, the way I was told you need to lay it out, you need to put basically the item, a brief description, um, what it was sold for, and so on and so forth, and keep a running tally. Keep a separate book for that. Because in three months after my death, approximately, um, there's a lady called Joanne Anderson will be contacting you. She's a forensic accountant. She's already been paid up for a simple service that she will just come and take a look at that book to make sure that... Um, that, um, as she said, all that is uh, sold goes to Brian's account and there should be a record kept. She will contact you even if you move. She will track Brian via his, as she said, via his national insurance number, etc. So you don't have to worry about that. Don't be afraid of it. It's just a safeguard for Brian. Um, the plaque that I want put on my... Um, the bench that I'm, I've left money for, uh, that's to go into uh, St Chad's Church. I'm going to leave it to you, Carol, and Pat, and perhaps with my sister to work out the word, the wording. I want a decent sized plaque on there, not a little thing, so it can be easily read, or even hand carved in the wood. I'll leave it up to you, uh, but it needs to be a bench of the prefabricated type. Not some silly handmade thing that costs a fortune. They're getting enough money to cover it. And it should read from, from if you go up the churchyard, you'll see ones that have already been done. And it says something like, in loving memory of me, much loved by, say, Brian, Carol, whoever else, whatever you need to put on it. Um, 